Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standards 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3 in 7th grade. And also under the study island topic, the lesson there is perimeter and circumference. So it's basically we're going to be talking about how to calculate perimeter and circumference, which is the distance around polygons and circles. And make sure that you're taking notes on some of the formulas and vocabulary words and problems that we're going to do so that you have those to reference back to when you're trying these problems on your own. And if I go too fast, just pause the video, rewind, take your notes, and get caught back up. And then you can always pause at the beginning of the question, work the problem out by yourself, and then watch the video so that you can see which questions you're getting right and which areas you still need to improve. And so I'm so glad that you're joining us today, and let's go ahead and take some notes. First, let's go ahead and define perimeter. Perimeter is the distance around all outer sides of a polygon. So perimeter can be found by adding the lengths of the sides of a figure together. So here, everything here but the circle is a polygon. So they're giving us formulas here that we can use. However, we can also just know that finding perimeter is adding the lengths of all the sides together, as it says at the top. However, the circle, the distance around a circle, is called a circumference. And we have to use this formula, circumference equals 2 times the pi, pi, number pi times radius, to find the circumference of a circle. So in number 1 here, we are asked to find the perimeter of the polygon shown above. It tells us that x is 8 and y is 19. So I'm going to go ahead and write 8 and 19 by those sides. Now since it's a parallelogram, I know that opposite sides are the same or congruent. So since this bottom is 8, the top is also going to be 8. And since the right is 19, the left is also going to be 19. And I recommend that when you are doing these problems that you copy the shape down and label the numbers that are the measures of the sides just like I'm doing. And if you need to pause it so that you can keep caught up and not get behind, that's fine. Pause it, copy the shape, and then jump right back in. And so here, perimeter is just you add up the lengths of all four sides so here I'm going to add 19 plus 19 plus 8 plus 8. And when you add those together, you get 54 units, which is choice B. This next question asks, what is the perimeter of the rectangle above? Well, I need to know the length of all four sides, and they only give us two. But since it's a rectangle, I know that opposite sides are congruent, or opposite sides have the same measure. So the bottom of the rectangle is 12 units, so the top is also going to be 12. The right side of the triangle is 4, so the left side is also going to be 4. So I recommend copy down the shape and the four side lengths also. And so to find the perimeter, I just add up the four sides. So I'm going to add 12 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4. And when I add up those four numbers, I end up getting 32 units, which is choice B. Next, we're given a square, and we want to find the perimeter of the square. So I know that squares, the lengths of all four sides of a square, are the same. So if one side is 15, then all four sides are 15. So that means I'm going to have to add 15 four times, which is also the same as 15 times 4. So you could do either of these problems to find the perimeter of a square. I personally think it's faster to do the multiplication. And when I do that multiplication, I get 60. However, if I were to do the addition, I would also get 60 that way too. So B, 60 units, is going to be my final answer. This next question gives us a trapezoid with the side lengths where W is 8, x is 6, y is 2, and z is 4, and it wants to know what the perimeter is. So trapezoid has four sides, and I know the lengths of all those four sides, so I'm just going to add those numbers together. So 
So I'm going to have 6 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. And when I add those four numbers together, that's going to give me 20. So 20 units is going to be the perimeter of that trapezoid, making my final answer C. This next question gives me a triangle, and it tells me that the side lengths are x is 9, y is 14, and z is 11. And it wants to know what is the perimeter of the triangle shown above. So to find perimeter, I add up all the side lengths. There's three sides here, so I'm going to add together three numbers. So I'm going to have 9 plus 14 plus 11. And when I add up those three numbers, I'm going to get 34, so that means 34 units choice D is my final answer. Next is a circle. Remember I said I have to know that the circumference formula for a circle is 2 times the number pi times r. Now sometimes we will use the approximation of pi, which is 3.14. And sometimes we just use the pi symbol. So I look at my answers, and the pi symbol is in all of my answers, so I know I'm going to keep just carry the symbol through all of my calculations. So remember, r here stands for the radius, and the radius is the length from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. So it tells us in this problem that the radius of this circle is 9. And so that means I'm going to use... 9 here instead of the letter r. So I'm multiplying 2 times pi times 9, and I can multiply in any order. So I'm going to take 2 times 9, which is 18, and then the pi symbol just carries on through. So my circumference in this problem is 18 pi inches. Next, I'm still finding the circumference of a circle, so I'm going to use that same formula, circumference equals 2 times pi r. However, this time I'm given that the diameter equals 10. A diameter goes through the center of the circle but connects edge to edge. So it takes two radiuses to make a diameter. So if the diameter in this circle is 10, then the radius is 5. So that means in my formula here, I'm going to have 2 times pi times 5. So make sure you catch that it's talking about the diameter and not the radius here. Don't let them trick you. And so once again, I can multiply in any order. So I'm going to take 2 times 5, which is 10. And then the pi symbol just carries through. So the circumference here is going to be a 10 pi inches. In this figure, I'm finding the perimeter of what's called a composite figure. And a composite figure is a figure or shape that can be divided into a combination of other figures. So if you notice here, I have a semicircle, which means half a circle, exactly half, and I have an isosceles triangle. And it tells me a sign maker is painting the white border of the outside of a sign for an ice cream shop. So it looks like an ice cream cone. The sign is made of a semicircle and an isosceles triangle, as shown in the diagram below. And it wants to know what is the length of the border. So I'm going to need to find the circumference of the semicircle and the perimeter of, these, of this part of the triangle. So since it's an isosceles triangle, I know that these two sides are going to be congruent. So this side is also going to be 19. Because remember, an isosceles triangle is a triangle with two congruent sides. And then to find the circumference, I'm going to have to use either of these formulas, either 2 times pi times the radius or pi times diameter. Since they give me the radius in this problem, I'm going to use the first one. So that means I'm going to have 2 times the number pi times the radius, which they tell us is 6. So 2 times 6 is 12, so this is going to be 12 pi. However, I'm only dealing with half of the circle. So that means I'm going to have to divide this by 2. Now 12 divided by 2 is 6, so the circumference of the circle of the half circle is 6 pi. So now I'm just going to add up all three parts together. I'm going to have 6 pi plus 19 plus 19. 
However, I can't add a pi, a number with pi in it, with a regular number with no pi in it. So I can't combine this either of these 19s with this 6 pi. So this 6 pi is just going to be carried on through, but I can add 19 plus 19. And when I add 19 plus 19, that's going to give me 38. So 6 pi plus 38 inches is going to be my final answer. And you can write that in any order, so that's going to make D my final answer. My next problem here is I have two rectangles put together to make a composite figure. And it says Shauna is putting a fence around her garden. The L-shaped garden is shown in the diagram below. So what would be the length of the fence? So if I look, I have to add up the perimeter of all the sides of the shape. I know most of the sides, but I don't know these two sides. So I'm going to have to find their measures. So if I look, if I look at this horizontal side, I'm going to look at my other two horizontal sides. All the way across the rectangle is 30. However, 16 of that 30 gets you from this part to this part. So that means to get all the rest of the way, I have to figure out what's left of 30 after I take 16. So to get that missing horizontal side, I'm going to take 30 minus 16, which is 14. So this top horizontal side is going to be 14 meters. And then I'm going to do the same with this vertical side. If I look at my other vertical sides, if I go clear from the top of the shape to the bottom of the shape, that's 30 meters. However, 14 of those meters gets me from the bottom to right here. So I need to figure out what's left of that 30 meters to get me all the way to the top. So this time, I'm going to take 30 minus 14, which is 16. So this other missing side is going to be 16. Now, I'm just going to add up all six of those numbers for the six sides and find out what my perimeter is going to be. So I'm going to have 14 plus 30 plus 30 plus 14 plus 16 plus 16. And when I do that, I get an answer of 120 meters, which is going to be choice B, my final answer. For this last problem, they don't give us a shape to look at, so we're going to have to draw our own from what we read. It says the city is planning a, to build a new park. The park will be in the shape of a parallelogram. With a perimeter of 562 yards, if the length of the park is 162 yards, what is the width of the park? So I know it's going to be a parallelogram, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a parallelogram. It tells me that the entire perimeter of this park is 562. And it also tells me that the length of the park is 162. So if this bottom length is 162, then the top of the length is 162, because a parallelogram has opposite congruent sides, which means the opposite sides are the same length. And now I need to find out what this width is. So I know that the perimeter, when I add all four of those sides, is going to equal 162. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract off what I know the length, the two lengths are, to find out what's low left over for the two widths. So first of all, I'm going to have to find out what the two lengths are together. So I'm going to take 162 and add it to 162. And when I get that, when I do that, I get 324. So 324 yards is taken up by the lengths. So I'm going to subtract that from the entire perimeter to see what's left over for the two widths. And when I do that, I get 238. However, that 238 has to be divided evenly between both sides. So I'm going to have to divide that 238 divided by 2 to find out what each width is. And when I do that, I'm going to find out that that division equals out to 119, 
which is going to be each width. So that's going to make 119 yards, choice B, my final answer. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.